Hello everyone, I am Zach Peterson here on the show floor at PCB West 2025 and I am here with Mohamed Matin, Technical Sales and Solution Architect at Sealess. Mohamed, thanks for coming over and talking to thanks us. Thanks for having me and giving me you know, a few minutes to talk about the technology, what's coming, you know, how the technology is shaping up today, yeah. what's in the future, so it's all good. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so I started working with you guys uh, last year, and then I was really happy to run into you at PCB East, but we yeah. didn't really get a time to chat. That's so, true. So it's good that I've run into you here at PCB West, and it's always funny who you run into at, the, at these shows. So if you could, just tell us about quickly about your background mm -hmm. and then how you got involved in Sealess. Yeah, so I've been in the EDA industry since my college days. Uh, you know, started with uh, Mentor Graphics, now it's part of Siemens EDA. Yeah. Uh, however, I come from actually ASIC chip design background, not from PCB. Uh, and then uh, in the process, uh, since Mentor days, I went for another startup called DAFCA in the chip design side of it or verification side of it. And then uh, I joined Altium, which is well known for PCB design tool. I was there for a long term. Uh, and then I joined Celus early last year. Yeah. Uh, to help Celus with their commercialization of the technology. So at the end of the day, you know, electrical engineering background with uh, chip design, verification, and then PCB design, and then technical sales and technical marketing. So. Nice, nice. So Celus or Celus, I call it Celus. I call it Celus. Yeah. You know, it's a you know, it's a, it's a European thing. So yeah, either way is fine. So Celis is, I think it's a pretty cool approach to applying AI to front end design for a new system. And for those that aren't aware, essentially you're taking an AI tool and you're combining well-defined pieces of circuitry together. And the AI basically, the AI's job is basically to figure out what components can we use in this block diagram and then how do we need to connect them together. Exactly, I mean it's really, taking advantage of the technology, the large language model, you know, you can call it um, prompt engineering, right? And yeah. then on the backend side, AI, to give the user who are not, want to dive into too much into the EDA tool, heavy dosage, rather they have some idea, they want to quick prototype something, and that's where Celus can come in. They can use the prompt engineering, some AI agent to help them creating that building blocks, and then the underlying solution that we have on our platform, in the library, you can quickly create the block diagram and then from there you can generate the full schematic to any choice of your EDA tool, the bill of materials, the layout, and then you, once you are satisfied, then you can load it up into your EDA tool and finish off your design. So what, what really inspired this approach? Because I, I think when, the reason I ask that is because if you look at a lot of the, the discussion about the use of AI and circuit design and PCB design, everybody wants to go at it from <laughs> scratch, right? Totally. They, they want to you know, analyze all the data sheets, figure out, out a way to create a schema that can generate connections and pick all the components and just do everything. And yeah. you guys have kind of like taken out 75% of the work and focused on what yeah. really matters. So that's the real technology, right, under the hood that you know, typically you don't see from the outside world, right? right? That when we talk about, you know, identifying based on your specification, which is the block level diagram, right? But under the hood, we actually work with different component manufacturer, right? You know, your NXP, TI, microchip, whoever it is, right? And then really looking at those data sheet of those components and then create what we call almost like a standalone application or sub circuit, right? So right. think about under the hood, it's not just a plain simple symbol and footprint of one component. It's actually the main component. Let's call it microcontroller. And then you have all the other peripheral circuit, right? Decoupling capacitor, your voltage, and other peripheral register capacitor that is needed to use that as a sub-application. And then it becomes a building block to be able to create that block diagram that people are you know, using it for. So you just preempted my next question, which is where do all of these block diagrams that go into a sealess design come from? Which is from the manufacturer. Yep. So, you know, we, we have this saying, I guess, or this kind of joke in the PCB industry, which is that the component manufacturers don't know anything about PCB design, but they know a lot about designing their own circuitry and that's where you really reduce the risk is by getting the circuitry directly from the manufacturer. Yeah, because we look at the reference design from all this manufacturer, right? Where their main components were used successfully. Sure. So then under the hood, we do a feasibility analysis to see how we can 
analyze that reference design and then break it up, which becomes those building blocks or Kubo, what we call Kubo, yeah. right? Uh, but then it's, it's much more technical technology going on behind the scene because we need to be able to identify what type of IO level needs to be, what is the signal to net mapping, right? How many GPIOs does it need to use the I square C versus UR? So it's, it's, there's some smart you know, technology architecture going on under the hood. Uh, but from the user point of view, they just come to the platform, they have an idea, they know they want to use a GSM block, they want to have a Wi-Fi module, they want to have a microcontroller, some other peripheral, they just drag and drop. Um, and in fact, now with the latest version, you can also load an image, right? Ideally, you have a hand ah. drawing, we call it design on a napkin or a whiteboard, and I can then load that on up, and then it will do the embedded search under the hood, the machine learning, and then it will identify the closest match, and then draw the block diagram, but then, again, just like any other AI or prompt, you don't want to rely 100%, right? At the end of the day, we want the user to empower, right? They want to take control. We're just giving them some legwork, right? Same yeah. with, you know, working with all the component manufacturer not to sniff through all the data sheet manually. Rather, right. we are giving them sort of the digital version of that application or sub-circuit. So it's saving a lot of time at the end. Right. Yeah, yeah, and then I think once someone goes through and does their own review on their their finished design, you gotta do it. Yeah. right? I mean, they've you've really cut out about seventy five percent. Yeah, let's say, you still review. have to do your, you know, the traditional spice analysis or sure. verification or sure. signal integrity and whatever the other simulation or verification tool you have to do to cross check your work. Right, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot yeah. of sense. So where can folks go to learn about Celis? Well, you can just go. It's open. Go to celus.io you know, create your login, start playing with it. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, the more user, the better. You know, we want to kind of promote what Celus is coming up with. Uh, and then by subscribing to our newsletter also, you can see what's coming up in the future, near term. So, yeah. Awesome. Mohammed, thank you so much. Thank you, Jack, always. It was nice chatting yes. with you.